Thank you, Astrid. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. And uh, on behalf of uh, Quadrina and Joanna and myself, we're very excited to uh, give you an update on some recent things that have been happening with regards to OSGO and o OGC collaboration. So in the next 20 minutes, we'll uh, walk through some timelines and history, um, some turning points, as well as what we've been up to with regards to collaborative events between the two organizations and talk to you about uh, our updated memorandum of understanding and how you can get involved. Because I know everybody here wants to get involved, right? History and timelines. So we've always had a natural relationship between um, open standards and, uh, and free and open source software, I believe, and this is a, a perfect fit, and um, we're excited to give these uh, uh, updates. How it all started. So, the, uh, the open story, open software and open standards has, uh, has been around for quite some time. It started off with GRASS in the uh, 90s in the Open GRASS Foundation, uh, NCSA uh, Mosaic. The OGC and ISO TC211 were formed in, 19, uh, in 1994, uh, both of them. And in 1999, we had the first OGC web mapping testbed in, uh, in, in Maryland, which had the first live demo of interoperable web maps. And in 2004, something uh, very important happened. The Open GIS Consortium turned into the Open Geospatial Consortium. Because it's not just about GIS the way it used to be, it's uh, geospatial as a, as, a wider, uh, as a wider domain. And in 2006, of course, OSGO was, uh, was founded, and the rest, as they say, is history. So now I'm going to show my age. And this is uh, uh, for historical purposes, but this is the actual first uh, uh, PowerPoint of the web mapping test bed that was in 1999. So we demonstrated that map servers can provide uh, static images of geospatial data, or sorry, GIS data, and they can happen on different servers. So what happens when you put those together? Oh my goodness. I thought the same thing. I was in the crowd and I was just shell-shocked. So I think we've come a long way, built on solid foundation since then. In 2006, we had the initial event uh, in, uh, in Lausanne, and we had the first memorandum of, of understanding between the OGC and, uh, and OSGO. And that proved very valuable to uh, sow the seeds of, uh, of where, where, we're, where we are today and the, some of the updates we're going to give to you. In 2009, we started the annual OSGO sprints. So the Sea Tribe was one that uh, I helped organize in Toronto, in Canada, and the, the Java one uh, in Bolsena, Italy, and both of those uh, sprints uh, continue to happen, as well as community-wide sprints in, uh, in OSGO. So this is a very important um, piece of the equation of having all these open source projects working together at these sprints, a lot of them implementing open standards. Turning points. Time goes on, and we do some uh, uh, inflection and, and we uh, and retrospection, and we see uh, what are new opportunities that can um, that can uh, be presented before us. So in 2017, there were a number of white pa papers that started to set a new direction, a clean break, modernized uh, modernized standards to to reflect the requirements and what we need in terms of uh, um, how. IT and information management happens today, as well as uh, addressing the mass market. So this, I think, is a really good response to the OpenGIS Consortium changing their name to the Open Geospatial Consortium, as well as uh, it, it, it's not only about people coming to GIS people for solutions, it's about the geospatial community uh, integrating with uh, wider mainstream mass market and IT initiatives. So with all that, we had the W3C Spatial Data on the Web Best Practices, which is a very important key cornerstone document. And we had the OGC API white paper in 2017, which called for uh, a modernization of a lot of our, uh, of the way our web services worked at the time. At the same time, the OGC uh, started to um, embark on um, embark on sprints. So the OGC started to have their own sprints. Previously, we only had member meetings or technical committee meetings. Now OGC is getting into sprints, and that is showing the realization of the value of, uh, of developers 
and, and their implementation. So this started with, with what was called the WFS3 hackathon in Boulder, I believe, um, or Colorado at least, and the weather, web, weather on the web API uh, uh, code sprint that happened in, um, in DC. The, the momentum of the sprints continued. And from one sprint, and, and we all got back home and said, oh, that was kind of cool. Next thing you know, a few months later, there was another one, and another one, and another one. So these were not just one-offs from OGC, but they were a wider direction um, that OGC was trying to uh, cut a path for. The momentum continued. In 2020, the OGC had eight sprints um, in, in all of 2020. Most of them were virtual, given, uh, given the, uh, the circumstances. In 2021, the momentum uh, continued. All along that time, in OSGO, we realized that given the shift that we wanted to sort of uh, look at the memorandum of, of understanding and see how we can um, um, update it and get a better, get a better value out of it. So, so within discussions in Bucharest between the OSGO board and, uh, and the OGC, we decided to embark on a new updated uh, memorandum of understanding. In parallel to that, we also had the first ever um, OGC, Apache Software Foundation, and OSGO Code Sprint in 2021, and it was. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about. Um, to talk a little bit. Talk to it a little bit later in the presentation. And in 2022, that momentum continued. So a lot of momentum uh, happening on both sides of the equation. Uh, uh, adherence to open standards and implementing open standards that are now much easier than than they've ever been, and uh, um, support of open source. From, uh, from open standards organizations. And we had the up updated memorandum of understanding, which I will talk to a little bit about later. So a lot's been going on from the perspective of uh, the timelines of both organizations, and you can see these convergences. With that, I'll turn it over to Joanna. Thank you. So the, the concept of building blocks is part of this paradigm change that uh, Tom has been describing. So standards are now developed as a set of discrete parts. Uh, and each one you can incorporate into your existing applications to enable just a particular piece of functionality. So you can basically use them like legal pieces and you can mix and match and create something new. Oops. There are many different reasons why uh, this sy synergy could have positive uh, effects both in OSGU and, and OGC. Uh, from the OSGU point of view, the projects can be involved in the development of the standards, so actively involved in the development of the standards. And from the point of view of OGC, there is a need for implementations, and in particular for reference implementations. So reference implementations are publicly available. Uh, so they normally are open source projects, not necessarily uh, OSGU, but they are very important in terms of uh, visibility of the standard. And OSGU has com com contributed already with uh, compliant standard implementations and also with reference implementations, which you can see, um, the log the, which logos you can see on the, side, on the slide there. So as Tom is, uh, was saying, uh, the, the standards are now developed in a different way, out in the open. So uh, most of the development takes place on GitHub repositories at the public eye. Anyone can uh, inspect the code and even contribute if you feel like you wish to do so with a pull request. And the sprints have become extremely important because they provide this feedback from the implementers. So. This feedback is incorporated in the, in the actual standard. So they are organized uh, regularly by OGC, and you are very welcome to participate. The first uh, joint code sprint, so it was uh, organized jointly by OSGU, um, Apache Software Foundation, and OGC took place last year. And it was, it was a huge success, many, many projects joined. And this year, we organized a second edition, which was also very, very much uh, attended. There were different projects 
uh, that participated in these code sprints, some OSU projects, but we would love to see uh, more projects coming. So there, there are plans to organize another one uh, next year, and we hope to see more people from, from the community there. Having said that, there will be a, a code sprint uh, in mid-September. Uh, this is jointly organized by OGC and ISO TC211, and it will focus on metadata and standards around metadata. So OGC API records, ISO 19115, FGJSON and also stuck. Uh, registrations are open and everyone is invited to participate either in person, it's going to be in London, or uh, virtually. And there will be another code sprint towards the end of the year. So this one will focus on standards related to web mapping. So OGC API tiles, OGC API maps, and OGC API styles. And now I'll pass the word to, to Tom so he can tell us a bit about this MAU. Thank you, Joanna. So I'm happy to announce that we have an updated memorandum of understanding between the OGC and OSGEO. It was a, a, a long trail, it took us a couple of years. Um, in OSGEO, we assembled a, uh, an MOU review team who did exactly that. They reviewed the existing uh, memorandum of understanding and identified uh, parts which would be uh, valuable for OSGEO and, and the OGC on their side did the, uh, did the, did the same thing. The press release was in, uh, was in January and there's been work uh, since then to get the entire activity moving. So this is really good news. The MOU itself the big update and value proposition from the MOU is that the previous MOU um, provided a number of slots to individuals in OSGEO who could then use those slots and uh, uh, check them out and check them back in as they work on, on various projects. The big thing now with the updated MOU is, is now OSGEO has a, an organizational membership or what, an OGC, what OGC calls uh, an associate membership level. And that allows an unlimited number of people, uh, of, of uh, participants from OSGEO to participate in OGC activities. So that is, uh, that is significant and that is a, a clear sign of the value of OSGEO participation and free and open source participation in the open standards uh, development ecosystem. And this is in line with, obviously, the joint code sprints that, um, that, jo that Joanna mentioned, which uh, we hope will continue uh, you know, in, into the future. So a lot of this, it's all about the cross-pollination, where we want, um, you know, where it's valuable to have more OSGO participation in OGC, and we want um, OGC to, uh, you know, have more code sprints and, and continue the focus on, on developers and software, and in our case, uh, open, uh, open, so free and open source software. Again, this is an unlimited membership. Uh, any number of, uh, or of uh, individuals in OSTO can participate. You can either participate in a standards working group if you want to help define the standard. So I just want to have a clarification there. The, the current uh, iteration of OGC API standards are done on GitHub. So you can interact with those standards through GitHub uh, just like uh, anybody else. If you do want um, to participate in the actual standards working group, which, is, which has uh, uh, meetings and, and so on and so forth within the OGC process, you can do that through the OSTO membership. So if there's something you wanted to improve in the spec and you really wanted to have a say, um, you can participate uh, normally on, on, on GitHub or through the code sprints, or you can um, sign up for one of the standards working groups who work on the standards. There's also domain working groups who are, are basically uh, information communities who are applying the standards for, for their given requirements and use cases. So the initial, the thinking in OSGEO is that the associate membership will be made available for, for charter members. There's, again, there's no limit. And as a charter member, you are representing OSGEO proper. 
and you'll be able to participate in the SWIGs or the, or the DWIGs accordingly. You'll also be able to present uh, on pilots and test beds, which also gives you, uh, and OSGO for that matter, opportunities to apply for funding um, with regards to these pilots, test spreads, or, uh, or, or code sprints. We're, we've established uh, a committee, and we're going to have a kickoff meeting, an OSGO OGC standards committee. I've got to get all that right and in order, and we'll be kicking that off in the fall to identify a technical representative as well as an architecture of participation on how we, as OSGO, concerted effort um, um, liaise and work with, uh, work with OGC. And we continue the joint code sprints, uh, as I mentioned before. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Kudrina. Thank you. Um, so, hello from my side. Uh, everything that you have uh, that you have heard until now is absolutely wonderful. But in reality, you know, the the powerful and um, uh, the productiveness of this uh, MOU update is going to be highly dependent on how uh, much we engage with OGC as OSGEO representatives. So this is a call to action. There are multiple uh, opportunities to engage. Uh, Tom, as well as Joanna mentioned, a few of them, but um, uh, please be um, be um, aware that there are uh, that that there are more, so uh, you can participate uh, for innovation pro uh, program such as the Disaster Pilot 2022 uh, Climate Resilience Initiative, the Testbed 18. Please join, vote, uh, and lead not only standards, but also the domain working groups, marine, climate change, uh, 3D information management, hydrology, and so on. Very important, take advantage of the marketing opportunity, which is, uh, which is a uh, which is a great, um, uh, a great advantage. Uh, make your o software OGC compliant, and um, importantly, um, uh, add your software to the uh, to the website. And of course, it was mentioned, lead and participate in the code sprints. Tom has already mentioned, but it's important to emphasize the fact that uh, participating from uh, OSGEO. Uh, from OSGEO side, you make the OSGEO voice heard within the OGC, which is an uh, again an important element. Uh, oh no. Uh, so, uh, in order to understand how we can best. Um, uh, channelize all these efforts within OSGEO. We had a birds of a feather meeting yesterday. Uh, we had very good discussions and a few important elements came out. Uh, so. One of the most obvious one was that all the work done to update the MOU and the update of the MOU was absolutely wonderful, but it is not enough. And um, the, uh, the committee that uh, Tom was mentioning will work to prepare outreach material for, all, for the OSGEO members to uh, clearly show all the opportunities that now we have through this, uh, through this update. Another important aspect. Oh, one minute. Another important aspect uh, is regarding the um, clear guidelines that we will set for the OSGEO representative within OGC. Uh, what uh, what to do? What is not that? Um, uh, not what not to do. Uh, so a few ideas that would be related to the possible roles that would be clearly translated in the time needed from the OSGEO uh, representative within OGC. Uh, another one is related to reporting back to the OSGEO regarding all the activities that are the activities in OGC. Um, and to go really fast forward. Um, uh, as Tom mentioned, we are putting together a dedicated committee for this, so you're welcome to join. And if you're interested in what is happening, please uh, join the standards list if you're not already there. Uh, no. So to uh, uh, go closer to the, to the finish, I'd like to... Um, uh, to uh, quote uh, wonderful Atina saying that you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, we shouldn't uh, get involved, contribute and benefit from this uh, memorandum of understanding, just as the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go together. So uh, to close, I would like to Ivan, invite Ivan Sanchez to share a bit of his experience with OGC. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kudrena. So uh, I was uh, curious about this code sprint thing that OGC and OSGEO were uh, setting up earlier this year. 
I am known for having strong opinions on uh, freedom and openness, so I approached this code spring with a bit of skepticism. I didn't know what to expect from, a, from an OGC event. And I have to say, I liked what I saw, like really liked what I saw. I was say, in my head, the OGC is a very bureaucratic uh, entity. And I was pleased to see that I didn't need to do any bureaucracy at all. I signed up as an unaffiliated individual. I didn't need to represent any organization. I didn't need to represent any project. I didn't need to represent any company. So you don't need to represent those here if you want to just dip your toes into how the standards are being done. You can just go by yourself and spend some time. Also, I have been implementing clients for several of the, of the OGC standards, and sometimes the experience as a developer is less than perfect when a standard is finalized because it's already set in stone. And for me, it has been uh, kind of al almost fun to see how the draft standard works, and it's been a boon to be able to speak to other developers and to the people making the standards about how the standard doesn't really feed my needs, so it's really good to be able to talk to the people actually making the standards and complain during the draft phase of the standard before it gets finalized. It will give you a much smoother experience when you actually have to do the final implementation. And you don't have to do anything to join the code sprints. You don't even have to be an OSGEO Charter member, even though you should, and please become an OSGEO Charter member and help promote the OSGEO goals. You can just go there and spend your own time, and that's all you will spend. A bit of time to see how the OGC code sprints work. So I will inv invite you to the next code sprints, which uh, I think Tom and, uh, has already said which they are. But please come, because it's an actual good experience. I have to say that the OGC is not, a perfect, it's not perfect. The code sprints are not still perfect but I think they are in the right way to becoming a good developer experience. So, uh, Tom, I think you have some closing words? Thank you, Ivan. Um, thank you, Quadrina, and thank you, uh, Joanna. So in closing, uh, this is a call to action. Um, I'll quote Cliff Kaufman from OGC, if anybody knows, interoperability doesn't happen by accident. And getting involved early will allow us to measure twice cut once and lower the barrier for people to implement the standards and implement the software and deploy the software and lower the access, the barrier to the access to the actual data. So with that, I thank everyone. We look forward to your participation, questions, comments, and enjoy the, uh, I hope you enjoyed the week. Thank you.